Uju relatives, Shungwewe Kamigo Coin Indigenous Cause. I'm Jamie Kellicott with Her Wellness Institute. I'm our Community Engagement and Indigenous Affairs Director. We are right now in Her Wellness Institute. We are in one of our therapy rooms. This is um, Lake Michigan is the room that we're in actually. And how about we start today's Wellness Friday with a smudge? How does that sound? So here's what I've got. For all of us that are joining today, I have some of our sage and sweet grass, some of our sacred medicines. And I'm gonna get our smudge going for us. If you have some at home, why don't you go ahead and smudge smudge with us. And if you don't, that's okay, because I've got it here for us. I'm going to let that keep burning. I'm going to put my eyes back on so I can see what I'm doing. All right, relatives, here we are. It's Friday. Friday. It's Wellness Friday. I'm so excited. I am so happy to be here with all of you. Thank you, Miigwech, for joining us today. We are here for reflections and recovery. A little bit about me. I am walking the red road. I am in recovery. It'll be six years in October. I'm in recovery from alcohol and um, a long line of adversities that have occurred for generations, right? And so part of my recovery has a lot to do with connecting with who I am as a person, just getting to know me, getting to know my true spirit. You'll hear me talk a lot of times about our spirit and who we are as individuals. And you don't have to be walking in recovery to be here and to join us on Fridays for Wellness Friday. A lot of the stuff that we talk about every week is for everybody for all of us all of us if you're just joining us for the first time welcome i'm so happy that you're here and i want to let you know that what you'll find here during our wellness fridays is a lot of love a lot of compassion and empathy We'll have a little fun, because we always got to have fun. There'll be a little bit of education. You might find out something new, something, a new skill maybe that you've never used before. Maybe it's a new healthy coping skill. Maybe it'll be a new way to take care of yourself. A new um, suggestion for self-care. We talk a lot about self-care here at well, on Wellness Fridays. We talk a lot about reflecting, reflecting on how our week went, on how our day was, and what we're about to do for the weekend. I like to share resources here on our Fridays together. I always like to start our, start our day, our session together with a smudge. And I like to start with reading uh, the meditation for the day. We'll get to that momentarily. But today my spirit is telling me to just talk a little bit about what we do, why we come together on Fridays. So Fridays is all about you, all about you taking care of yourself, 
learning from each other because that's what we're doing. You're able to comment. If you have things to say, please drop a comment. Leave something there. Um, I'm hoping that I can see your comments. I think I can, though. So if you feel like sharing anything at all, please know that this time that we have together, you and I, and Xavier is usually moderating today. I think Xavier's off, though. So it might just be us, and that's okay. That's okay. This is all about you. I'm here to support you. I'm here to help create safety for you. And if and Xavier, if you are out there, leave us a comment. Let us know. Xavier is one of our CARES counselors. He is an amazing spirit, an amazing human being. And every single day, he walks alongside all of the women here, supporting us, honoring us, helping our relatives in the community every single day, and always bringing it with love. So thank you. Miigwech. Miigwech, Xavier. So let's get to it. How about it? All right. So here's the book that I like to read out of. This is Meditations with Native American Elders, The Four Seasons by Don Coyas. Well, Bryety, um, well, Bryety has been a really, really, really uh, very instrumental piece for me in my recovery. Um, you know, just like with anything, you may read stuff or come across things that maybe you don't connect to everything and that's okay. So for me, my spirituality is a very personal thing. It's something that I am connected to. Um, I just am, it's just a part of me. And so what I practice and what I carry with me, with my culture and with my language that I'm learning I only know a little bit, but I'm learning, I'm trying, connecting. When I'm in nature, that's what I connect most to. And being able to learn new things about who I am as a person, as a woman, as a human, as a mom. So this has been very helpful for me. Buju Barbara, hi Barbara. Oh, Barbara, Barbara, Barbara. Thank you for being here with us, Barbara. Okay, before, now I'm going to put this on hold for a second, just because I have to do that. We're live and you never know what's going to happen. Well, right now we have Barbara here. Oh my, Barbara, I didn't know that about, oh my goodness. Okay, so I have to share this. Hold on. Let's stop. Let's take this in for a moment. So Barbara, Black Deer Mackenzie was our board president and she's still kind of like our acting board president for her Wellness Institute as we find a new board president to replace her. And I don't know how we're going to do that because Barbara is absolutely amazing. So whoever comes in next has really huge shoes to fill because Barbara has been such an inspirational spirit and force behind what we do here. And she's been so supportive and loving to Leah from the very beginning. And so it's a big, that's a big position. So Barbara is now one of our newest staff members. She is our community healer and CARES director. And I am not going to try to remember what CARES stands for. I know I know it, but I don't want to mess it up because I could possibly mess it up. We're at the end of the week and I don't want to do that to you. So Barbara... Could you put your, your title into the comments? That would be beautiful. And Barbara just mentioned that as of the 27th, she is going to be sober for 26 years. Oh my gosh. Barbara, miigwech, thank you for sharing that. Why did I not know this? This is the first time I'm hearing this. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Can we get a whoop? Barbara. All right. I love it. I love it. You know what, Barbara? You are so funny. She says, yeah, I wear a size 12. So all y'all need to have big feet. <laughs> oh my gosh, Barbara, you are funny. And you know what? You and me both. So you and me both, sister. 
same size. That's the same size that I wear. So it's all good. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. So here I've been around more tall women than I've ever been around in my entire life. So I just feel completely at home. All my life, I was the tallest girl, always made fun of, looked at strangely, talked about, bad names told to me, grown men treated me like I was a woman when I wasn't, I was a kid, you know, all kinds of stuff. So this place, Her Wellness Institute, what Leah Denny has built, our CEO and founder is just absolutely amazing and breathtaking and spirit filling and I'm forever grateful. So look at what you guys all found out in these few minutes, all because Barbara's over here telling us her shoe size. <laughs> so, okay, Barbara's title, Community Healer and Community Advocate Resource Emotional Support Director, CARES Director. Thank you, Barbara. Miigwech. Oh, okay. I love this. You guys are making me so happy right now. So let me read... Let's read, it's the 21st of August. The greater the faith, the greater the result. And that's a quote by Fool's Crow, who is Lakota. The creator designed us to act on faith. We are able to do this by holding firm to our beliefs. If we believe something, and if we don't want the belief to change, we need to add the power of the great spirit to this belief. We must always have the spiritual added to our beliefs. If we don't add the spirit, then we may very well change our minds during the first time we are tested. Mm. Each time we are tested and we don't change our minds, we get stronger. The wind may blow on the red willow trees, bending them and causing the roots to grow deeper. The more the wind bends the tree, the bigger, stronger, and deeper the roots grow. We should be happy that we are tested. It's the creator's way of making us have greater faith for greater results. Great Spirit, I know if I am tested today that I can count on you to give me the courage to get to the other side. On the other side of Every test is the reward of strength. Make me strong. That's today's meditation. It's a good book. I love this book. And the, the meditations always, always make sense for the day. It always is exactly what needs to be he heard. And I hope that what we heard just there it was something that helped you. I hope it gives you a little more strength. I hope it reminds you of something that you needed to hear today. For me, what it reminds me of is there was a time, oh, let's see, I've been here five months. So maybe this was a year ago and I was on my way to work my old job and I was, it might've even been longer than a year because I was in the real thick of my schooling and there was a lot happening. And I was driving along, it was early in the morning, so I was headed to work and I was just driving along. And you know, when you're just kind of driving and daydreaming and looking around and I kept kind of looking side to side and in my head, I was saying all kinds of things to myself. Like, what are you doing? Are you sure this is what you're supposed to be doing? Why are you back in school? Are you sure you're supposed to be back in school? How do you even know you're going to find a job? Like, what if you're not good at it? What are you doing? And there were so many thoughts and a lot of them were really negative and just bringing me down, bringing me down. And you know how we can have those thoughts that come really quickly. And all of a sudden, you've got a ton of really negative things that are spinning around in your head. And that was all happening within seconds of me driving. And as I kept thinking and questioning myself, um, I'm kind of scanning the road and looking side to side. And then I just looked ahead and there was a car in front of me and the license plate said plan for you. 
And I was like, oh, okay. And I looked up and I was like, all right, I got it. You've got a plan for me. Okay, I'm not questioning it anymore. And since that day, I didn't question. I didn't question my thoughts on why I was going back to school. I followed my intuition. I followed my gut. I've really learned to trust my gut. Took me a long time to do that, but I did. I learned to trust my gut. And now I'm very certain that it was more than a year ago. It had to have been a couple of years ago when that happened. Because since then, I've been in school for a while now. And I'm finally getting close to ending or, you know, finishing my schooling. So yay, yay, almost there. And we have another guest who is on with us, Ms. Malia Chow, who is our community healer and one of our advocates. Aloha, Buju. Malia, thank you for being here. Such a wonderful, wonderful thing to see you here. Thank you. So appreciate you. Malia is on every Monday, more uh, Monday through Friday, every morning at 8 a.m. And she goes on for R&R &R and she gives us so much, so much self-care to start our morning. It's really a beautiful thing. I have the pleasure of starting my mornings with Malia every day, every day of the week. And so Thank you, Malia. It is a real honor to walk alongside you and all of the other staff members that we have here. I consider you all friends and sisters and relatives. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a real pleasure. This is turning out to be such a great Friday. Oh my gosh. I feel like we're having a little sister circle here. This is awesome. I love it. So thinking about what that meditation was talking about and having spirit, having faith, connecting to whatever that is for you. It's a really good reminder for us. And interesting enough, when I was at um, my most troubled times of, wasn't the most troubled times in, ter in terms of adversity or what I was experiencing, but it was my most troubled times as a sober person because I had not started my healing yet. And what I started to realize is that every time that I walked away from my spirituality, things started going amiss. Things were feeling troubled. It was an, it's interesting. It's interesting how healing works. It's all, it's different for everybody, but I, I, um, self-disclosure for my, for, for me, I have had a therapist for a very long time for quite a few years to help me on my healing journey. And that's been a perfect thing for me and has, has taught me so much about myself and allowed me space, space that was safe and space that was free of judgment. And I needed that in my healing. And I say that only because a lot of times there's people who are, who are worried about that. They're wondering like, is it safe to have a therapist or is that something that I should do? Or, you know what? It's a totally personal, personal decision to make. For me, it was beautiful. And I feel very fortunate because of it. Very fortunate. I'm a big believer in seeking assistance, seeking help. I, I believe that we all need help some way, some shape or form. And um, I don't see that as a bad thing. I don't see that as a negative. I see our well-being as a very positive thing. I see our community's well-being as a very positive thing. So needing help and asking for help or having a day where we're struggling and we're not sure what to do, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. And in fact, I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful when we're able to be vulnerable and talk about our story, open up and ask someone for help, sit with someone, talk about what they're going through, maybe share a little bit about ourselves with that person just sit and listen, all those things are beautiful. 
all of them. So on Fridays, I'm here to remind you of that. I swoop in on Fridays and remind you all of how beautiful you are and how sacred you are and how special and amazing and strong and resilient every single one of you are. It took me a long time to realize that. It took me a long time to realize that about myself. And once I did, it was so freeing, so freeing. It's like if I really think back on life, how I feel today and the way that I present myself today is who I always was. Who I always was, who I always was. Is that how you say that? You know how you, when you get tripped up on a word and you're like, that doesn't sound right. Is that right? I can remember being a kid and feeling exactly like I feel right now. The way that I think, the way that I think about humans and our community and spirituality. That was me. That was me as a kid. And along, and along my life and my journey, I got hurt. I got hurt a lot of times by a lot of different people. And so it caused, it caused me to go internally, to stop feeling about certain things, to stop sharing, to stop caring. It caused me to hurt, hurt, hurt myself, hurt other people. It caused me to drink alcohol for a really long time. That was normal. That was normal for me. And I know that it's normal for a lot of us. And you know what? We live in Wisconsin, which really makes it normal. They really normalize drinking. It's glamorized, partying and, and um, drinking to excess, I guess is what's glamorized. But I tell you what, finding my true spirit has been the most amazing experience. It has not always been the easiest experience, but it has been the most amazing experience. Healing is hard. Sometimes it feels really yucky. Sometimes there's days where it's like, I didn't want to feel the things that I was feeling. And it scared me, caused me to cry, caused me to have anger, caused me to push good people away caused me to be fearful of relationships, caused me to be fearful of love. But I hung in there. I hung in there, even on those really hard days. And I know that's what you guys are doing too. I know it. I know it. You're hanging in there. And you're coming out on the other side even stronger, even more beautiful, more resilient, more amazing. That's powerful. That's really powerful. It's a real, real honor for me to be sitting here right now talking with all of you. I can feel, I can feel your energy. That might sound strange for some people, but I can feel it. I can feel the love. I can feel the prayer. I can feel the good spirit. Fills me up. And I know that you guys are helping each other too. So if there's anyone, anyone out there, who's watching right now, or who maybe will watch this in the future. If you are having a hard time, if you're struggling today, if you're having a lot of uncertainties and you're just not sure, 
Maybe you're having a day where you're really angry. Maybe you're feeling like you don't care about anything. Maybe you just want all of the pain and the feelings of hurt and the emotions to just stop. I want to remind you, you're not alone. You're not alone. And it's okay. We've all been there. We've all had those days. We've had those days filled with tears. We've had those days filled with a, a fist that's clenched because there's so much just stuff inside and anger, anxiety, tension in the chest, tightness in the chest, maybe headaches. Maybe it feels like headaches. Ringing ears, back aches, stomach pain. Feeling really tired, not wanting to do anything. We've been there. It's okay. And if you're feeling like that right now, I want to remind you of a couple things. First thing I want to remind you is, take a deep breath. Grab a glass of water, whatever you've got. If you've got a cup, you got a mug, having water with you, deep breathing helps you slow down. Just sip the water, just sip it. And focus on your breath. Breathe in through your nose for four seconds and out through your mouth for six. having a hard day, start there. Start with some water, start with deep breathing. You're going to get through it. You're going to get through it. You are amazing. You are beautiful. You are loving. You have the most amazing spirit deep down inside of you. And even if you don't know it yet, that's okay. I'm going to keep showing up and I'm going to keep reminding you. You're beautiful. You're resilient. You have the most amazing spirit. I'm going to keep showing up and I'm going to keep reminding you. Until you believe it. It's okay. You've got a lot of brothers and sisters out there who are here to support you. A lot. I'm gonna get some smudge for us again. Because today, even though we're having fun, we started out having a lot of fun and we're kind of goofing around, it's a serious topic. I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to be scared. I don't want you to be hurting. And I understand that there are there are some that are hurting. So I'm going to give you some more smudge. Just take that in. Remember to have some water. Do some deep breaths. You're doing good. So I'm just realizing that we have some comments that I didn't notice before. All right, so let's get to the comments. Malia says, it's good to hear, be here with you on the other side of the cam, sister. Yes, I love it. Miigwech. Thank you, Malia. Barbara said, that's so cool. I wish I'd have had any kind of direction or message. I've had faith and I am strong but maybe I'm just blind to the signs. Barbara, you are not blind to the signs. No, no, you're not. What could be though, what could be is when we are really busy and we've got a lot going on and you are such a strong woman 
who has been working full time, you've been a board president, you're a community member, you've been, you were in that, the um, ancestral women's group singing, so you're doing a lot of traveling. There's a lot happening. Sometimes we just don't hear or see the signs because we're busy. When we start slowing down and start really paying attention, paying attention to ourselves, giving ourselves that time, because I imagine that you just haven't had a lot of time. Because I know that you see the signs. I think you do. I think you do. You know. Malia says, so happy to see your face, Jamie. Jamie making me tear up now. Oh, thank you for being you. Yes, and to be able to surrender and not always have to feel personally obligated to be in control. Mm, Malia. Yes. You know what, Malia? I've already cried like three times today, so... <laughs> Oh my gosh. We we always joke here at Her Wellness Institute, Malia, I know you say this too on your live sessions that if we have not had a day where we're not crying <laughs> at our on our um during our day, something's not right because we are all truly we're the the work that we're doing is a lot of spirit work and a lot of healing work and the journey is incredible. The journey is hard. The journey is beautiful. Every, all of it. It's amazing. And when you're working with such amazing individuals, other strong women who have gone through so much adversity and still show up and come out on top, still show up and come with love every single day. Yeah. There's a lot of emotions, a lot of really good emotions, great emotions. So yes, I totally feel you sister. I am feeling it with you. Oh, Donna, boujou Donna, hey. Donna says miigwech for sharing. Oh, Donna, I'm so happy you're here. Sending you mwah, lots of love. Thank you, miigwech. Donna, you're wonderful. I'm not going to, there's so much that I want to say, but I, we don't have everything ready to go yet. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk big right now, but because I want to talk really big about Donna. <laughs> we have so much, we have so much, that's the wrong word I'm looking for. We have so many great things that we are planning for the fall and I can't wait to share them with all of you because you will be you will be the first ones that we start sharing on our wellness Fridays and R and R's in the morning. Once we know everything about our fall programming, we're going to have it out there. Just know that this coming fall relatives, we have so many good things lined up. Um, there's going to be opportunities for women to come together and there will be opportunity for our children to um, have some more opportunities of really fun activities. So I'm excited. I really am. We, the way we do our programming here at Her Wellness Institute is by the season and summer, summer season is for us getting close to wrapping up and then we'll be finishing up, finalizing all of our information and being able to get it ready for um, September. And it's exciting. It's an exciting time. And I want you all to know that for Wellness Friday, we will continue to have uh, something going on on Fridays. It will continue to be recovery focused and I will continue to show up. And the, the time is probably going to change a little bit. Um, it is changing a little bit, but it might be even more accessible for, for a lot of you. That's what we're hoping. So and don't forget that even if you miss a live, that's okay, because you can always, always jump back on to the lives um, in your spare time. You can always go to our Facebook page and, and um, you know, log in, click on the link. You can share the link with other people. I don't even think you have to be a... Facebook member to watch the video, but to comment, you do have to be 
on Facebook, and then you would have had to like our page and follow our page. And then you can start commenting. So if you ever hear anybody saying like, hey, I'm trying to comment, but nothing's showing up, ask them those couple of questions. Are you, are you sure that you liked the page and did you follow the page? Because that's our requirements to be able to comment. But yes, all that from seeing, Bar, uh, from seeing Donna on here. Oh, Donna, you're such a wonderful spirit. Love you so much. Thank you for being here with us. And Barbara, yes, says, hi, Donna, glad you could join us. And Trisha, oh, bonjour, Trisha, hello. She said, I feel like that's something I still need to do is to heal. I still feel so much shame when I cry or to have feelings. Oh, Trisha. Trisha Miigwech for sharing that. Thank you. Thank you. That's beautiful. That's brave. That is healing. That is healing. Just the fact that you said that, that you were able to share that with us, that's a part of your healing. And you're here today for a reason. And you've got all of us here who are supporting you. We're showing up and we're supporting you. Sending you lots of love and lots of virtual hugs. I'm a hugger, so this whole pandemic has been throwing me for a loop because my instant reaction is, as long as it's obviously healthy, I don't, I don't, um, I'm not going to hug someone who's not comfortable with that. But, but Trisha, sending you lots of virtual hugs and lots of prayers, healing prayers. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us and for sharing that. Your story is sacred. And you know what? Let's talk a little bit about shame. Let's talk just a little bit. That's a big feeling. That's a big feeling that a lot of us, a lot of us have gone through. And what I want to say about that First off, so I want you, I would like you to be gentle, be gentle with yourself. Whatever that is that you're feeling the shame about, I want you to know that if there's adversity that has happened, if there's some traumas that have happened, if you've experienced something that hurt you, that is not your fault. That's not your fault, Trisha. Crying, crying is beautiful. Crying is healing. In my opinion, crying is necessary. Crying is a normal human reaction. Crying comes from here. There's, you've got this beautiful heart in here, this beautiful heart and this beautiful soul, your spirit. I don't know how many times um, you've been here, Trisha, but a lot of times I like to talk about an onion as I will say, if I was holding an onion in my hand right now, so we have to do a little bit of envisioning. So if I had an onion in my hand right now and Trisha's true spirit was way deep down in the middle of that onion, I'm holding Trisha right now. And your true spirit is way deep down in that onion. And as you went along in life, things happen, experiences happen, situations happen, little, thing, little things here and there, things are said and done. All of a sudden, those layers of that onion start to go like this. Those layers start to cover up our true spirit that true spirit that's way deep down in that onion. And every time that we open up and we talk about our story, about who we are, about what has hurt us, about how we feel, we start opening up when we cry, maybe we even scream, it's okay. 
a layer starts to peel off. You cry, there goes a piece of that. There is a little bit of a layer. You tell your story, a little piece of your story, there's a layer that comes down. As we heal, we keep peeling away, peeling away at that onion. We eventually get to that true spirit, us. That's who we are. And I'm going to tell you, Trisha, it's not always going to feel good. I know that. It's okay. It's okay, sister. Hang on. Hang on. You are doing great. You are doing great work. You are showing up. You're talking about it. You're trying. You're healing. You're crying. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I get really happy inside. I do. I get happy and excited when I know that there are people that are healing. Whether it's relatives that I'm working working with, walking alongside with them. When I see that and when I hear about that, that's something to be happy about. It's healing. And it may not feel like healing, and I get that. Sometimes healing doesn't feel like that. It feels like, oh, I don't like this feeling. Oh, I don't want that feeling. I don't want to feel that. I don't like it. It's okay. Hang on. You're doing it. You're doing it. And I would encourage you to go back to those couple things in the beginning when I talked about have some water, do some deep breathing, bring your sacred medicines out, smudge, layer tobacco, maybe have some cedar tea, whatever that is that you connect to, whether it's music, art, books, reading, journaling. Write about those feelings. Write them out. Put them on paper. Take them out of here. Put them down on paper. Just that act of physically taking the pen or pencil or colored pencil or marker or whatever it is, crayon, the physical act of having Having your pen and whatever it is that you're going to write on, this is healing. That physical act, getting it out of here, putting it down onto paper. It frees our mind. Frees our mind. We don't have to worry about those thoughts that are kind of racing around in there sometimes. Racing, racing, racing. We can, we can get those out onto paper. And then if it's really something that's really, really bothering you, if it's a really big worry, it's a big worry or it's a big feeling that you kind of want to let go of and you're tired of carrying it, you know what else you can do? You can take that, write it out on some kind of paper, fold that paper up, burn it in a fire. Go outside, have a fire, burn it. Watch it kind of just disappear. There's another practice that I like. Thinking about just the, just the fact that you're thinking about, so you're envisioning what you would do with your worries. I like to go to the water. There's a creek that's by my house that I like to go to. It's in the woods. And you know, when you, if, you can, if you can envision a very large leaf. I like to envision that I'm taking my worries and I'm dropping my worries onto that leaf and the leaf is going, I'm going to set it down on the creek, on the water, and it's going to float away. You could envision that. You could do that. You could actually go out and find leaves or whatever that is. Something natural. I like using natural things so that we're not harming the environment. Just take a take a leaf. If you if you use tobacco with your um, in your culture, you could take 
You could pray, put your prayers into your tobacco and put it onto the leaf and let that leaf go. If you like that visual of seeing that, seeing the motion of that, of the motion of your worries leaving you. Be creative. This is all about you. There's lots of opportunities. Patricia, you're doing it. You're doing it. That's awesome. That is awesome. Thank you for sharing and thank you for being here with us because the fact, the very fact that you commented and you opened up and you talked about a little piece of your story, you are helping another individual. You are helping another relative. And that's exactly what our community needs. Our community needs you, all of you. That's exactly what our community needs. You know what that's called? CAM. C-A-M. Community Activated Medicine. That's a term that was coined by our CEO and founder, Leah Denny. You know what it means? The people are the medicine. You are the medicine. You're the medicine, Trisha. You're the medicine, Malia. You're the medicine, Donna. You're the medicine, Barbara. All of you. I'm the medicine. Leah's the medicine. All of our sisters and brothers, they're the medicine. We all are the medicine. Community activated medicine. Malia says, yes, and that hurt can cause us to close up and harden. Yeah, shame can do a number on us. It really can. And that's why I want to say, and I ask you all, be gentle with yourself. It is not your fault. And you know what? If there are things, if there's mistakes that we've made in life, we can own that. We can own that and we can also forgive ourselves. We can forgive ourselves. You got to forgive yourself. We can't keep holding ourselves accountable for something that we've, we've um, worked on and tried to make better. When we're healing, we're healing. That's a part of it. Forgiveness is a part of it. You all are showing up and you're doing the work. I'm honored to be here with all of you right now. You are sacred. You are sacred. You are beautiful. You are resilient. There's another piece of that that I want to talk about is that sometimes, sometimes our mind is not telling us the truth. And what do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? So let me give you an example. When we have lived a life where there is or has been a lot of adversity or trauma, things that have made us scared, that have hurt us, it could be abuse could be physical, sexual, emotional, mental. Maybe there's substance abuse, substance misuse. Maybe there's neglect, whatever the case is, whatever it is. So when we've had a lot of adversity and we're carrying that adversity and we're carrying those pains and those hurts and we're carrying them for a long time we can become distrusting and we can start to second guess things. And maybe we don't have really good communication because of all that. And so we haven't healed yet. Or maybe we're working on our healing. Maybe we are actually working on our healing. And then there's others who are like, yes, I'm definitely working on my healing. And I'm doing a lot better. Even in those times, even in those times, there can be moments 
where our mind goes back to a situation that isn't really happening. It can go back to a situation where we misunderstand something. It's happened to all of us where we think that maybe um, the way that our friend or our loved one, how they responded to us, maybe we think it means something else. Some, we think it means something and that something is hurting us. And then we come to find out that that's not it at all. Sometimes our mind just straight up lies. And I say that because that was something that I really needed to hear early on in my healing. And I never knew that. I never knew that. I thought for real, if I was thinking something, if I thought it, if it came to my head, that must mean that it's true. And I learned that there was a lot of things that my mind was lying to me about. My mind would tell me that I'm not good enough. My mind would tell me that I'm ugly, that I'm not worthy, that I'm not a good mom, that I'm not a good friend, that I'm not a good daughter, that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not enough, or that I'm too tall, or I'm too loud, or it's a lot of negative things. I learned from Malia's R&R that there are thousands of negative thoughts that people have in a day. In like one single day. Let's just think about that for a moment. Holy cow. Thousands? That really made me think. Like, wow. So, as we walk and we're walking our healing journey, we're slowing down a bit. We're thinking about what we're thinking about. Remember that sometimes our mind is not telling us the truth. So if today is a day where a thought pops in your head that says you're not worthy, I'm telling you right now, your mind is lying to you. That is not true. You are worthy. And I want you to practice saying that. I really want you to do that. That's your homework today. You're getting homework. <laughs> Here's what I want you to do. At least once a day for the next week until next week, Friday, I want you to once a day, look in the mirror and tell yourself, I am worthy. And I want you to say it out loud. I am worthy. And you practice that. And you know what ends up happening? Is that the more that our brain hears these positive thoughts, these positive comments, these positive words, starts to believe it. And then all of a sudden, one day you notice that you're acting a little different. You're standing a little taller. You're walking a little more confident. You're talking a little more assertive. And that's a whole nother wellness Friday that we can talk about communication, the difference between passive, aggressive, assertive, passive aggressive. Those are things that we don't always learn. It's helpful to know them as you're, as you're walking your healing journey. But that one thing, I am worthy. Say it out loud. Let's do it together. Oh, this is going to be fun. Let's do it together. Okay, ready? On the count of three, we're all going to yell it out. And I want you to say it as loud as you can, okay? I mean, unless you're somewhere where you know you really can't. Then I'll understand. I'll, but let's try to do it. Okay, one, two, three. I am worthy. Yes, you are worthy. Every single one of you. Every single one of you. You're beautiful and sacred, resilient, kind, awesome, amazing. You're worthy.
Barbara said, crying and feeling are part of the, um, yes, crying and feeling are part of the healing. Yeah. As a matter of fact, trauma and hurt can be passed along the generations when people don't feel or cry. That was a big lesson that affected a lot of our ancestors and elders from the boarding schools. Miigwech, Barbara, thank you so much. Yes, there's a lot of historical and intergenerational trauma. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, ladies, you've all been so amazing. Malia says, thanks for showing up and for the reminders. We get so bogged down with difficulties and stress and insecurities. I think the reminders are so important, yeah. And then she said, she's right, Barbara, 100. <sighs> yep, crying. That's probably what you're talking about, Malia, aren't you? I know, LOL. <laughs> so funny. Okay, and Donna, I can totally relate to many things you have shared. Donna, thank you. Miigwech. Malia says she's looking forward to it, Donna. Donna says, love you too. Oh, thank you, Donna. Gomez, Robin, boujou, hello, how are you? I love the little smiley face, like, Mwah! I love it. That's awesome. I love it, love it, love it. Malia says, yes, Trisha. It reminds us that we are not alone. We're not alone. It helps us to understand that what we are experiencing is okay and we can get through it. That's right. Thank you, Malia. And Malia says, yes, I have found that because of lots of past abuse and trauma, my mind makes connections and assumptions to fill in the gap because that is what I was always experiencing. Yeah. Thank you, Malia. Thank you for sharing. You're right. You're absolutely right. And then Malia said, so it's like a broken record, living over and over again, what we think is going to happen next. Yeah, you're right. And you know what, Malia? The fact that you are talking about this, healing. Peeling away another layer getting closer to your true spirit. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, so you know what, relatives? I am going to read us a positive quotation. Let's see what it says for today. All right, today's the 21st. Today says taking action. All you have to do is look straight and see the road. And when you see it, don't sit looking at it. Walk. And that was a quote by Ann Rond. We've done our research. We've talked with friends and family. We've made lists and created plans. Now we have to double check everything so that we can be certain everything is right before we move ahead. But sometimes... We can plan ourselves right out of an opportunity by trying to make everything too perfect. Sooner or later, we have to stop planning and get moving. It may be more important for me to take action than it is to make sure my plan is perfect. There are no perfect plans, relatives. We do the best that we can. We're doing it right now. We're showing up. We're practicing. I am worthy. You're all worthy. I can't wait to hear about your homework and how you did when I talk to you next week, Friday. Once a day, just look in the mirror once a day and tell yourself, I am worthy because you are. And before we go today, I always love to sing a song. And today I'm going to sing my favorite song that I always end our session with. And this song is called Follow. And I love the lyrics. And the first time that I, when I learned this song was with a good friend of mine, Anne. And her and my husband and I were in a band called Gypsies in the Palace. And we would do acoustic rock tunes. And we actually got to travel out to California 
one year and we opened up for Dwight Yoakam at a National Indian Gaming Association, um, I guess it was a event. And this is one of the songs that she introduced me to was this song called Follow by Brandy Carlisle. And so normally if I wasn't by myself, I would be playing this song with my husband. He would be playing the djembe and my friend, Anne, our friend Anne would be playing the acoustic guitar and it's just beautiful. And the lyrics always speak to me. And I dedicate this song to all of you. It's called Follow. Follow. Your heart and see where it might take you. Don't let the world outside there break you. They know not who you are inside. And they've never felt your pain. Don't ever let them crack. Hold out. I know you feel it getting cold out. Without the blanket for your soul now. Before you know it, you'll be frozen. And you have to see this through. There's no one here but you. Be alright, come and Reminds me of who I used to be. But now that's nothing more than a memory. Don't go to sleep or cry because tomorrow, well, you feel that it, it will swallow. You up and not know this will matter, will matter anymore. I feel the rain coming now. Reminds me of who I used to be. But now that's nothing more than a memory. Follow your heart and see where it might take you don't let the world outside there break you they know not who you are inside they've never felt your pain don't ever let them crack your shell. watch everyone. Thank you so much for being here. You are worthy. You are sacred. Your story is sacred. Don't let them crack your shell. You've got it all within you already. Sending you lots of love, lots of peace, lots of joy for your weekend. I'll see you next week, Friday. Consider joining Malia at 8 a.m. on Monday morning on our Facebook page for her R&R. &R. Otherwise, have a really great weekend. 
and we have a survey on top of the um, up in the title there's a survey if you would take a few moments to fill out our survey it helps us to know what the needs are in our community so we know what to keep putting together so we can continue to help serve our indigenous communities and our underserved communities and our victims of crime sending you lots of love you guys miigwech sisters sending you all kinds of love Giga Wobbleman.